is DAX hard? Yes. <laughs> but can we make DAX slightly easier to debug when you're in trouble? Hell yes. All right, let's just go check out these five absolutely amazing DAX debugging tricks. All right, the first rule is the three-step evaluation rule, and I use it a lot for simple or very hard calculations. Take a look at how this works. So I have the simple matrix visual here. I have the year and the month coming off from my calendar table, and the transactions is right here, which is nothing but the count rows of the sales table. Now, at this point, I want to be sure that, hey, this number 19 looks dubious, and I want to check that. How do I check that? How do I debug this calculation is through the three-step DAX evaluation process. In that three-step process, the step number one says, apply the filters on the data which are there from the visual. So this 19, which is right here, carries two filters coming off from the calendar table. So year filter and the month filter are the two filters coming off from the calendar table and they are filtering my sales table. I'm gonna literally do that in Excel on my data. So I can just go over to my data, apply the filters and take these two filters, which is the filter of 2011 and the month of Feb being applied on my data. So I can just do that, uh, Feb, click on okay. And that's the data of Feb. Now, once the filters have been applied, then the second step of the DAX comes into play and on the filter data only whatever DAX you have written which is nothing but the count rows of the sales table is going to be applied on the filter data only now once DAX to count the number of rows right here it is going to find that there are only 19 rows on the table and that 19 as the third step is then returned back to the visual and that is what you take a look at in the visual the three-step DAX calculation process is absolutely helpful but at the moment we discussed a very simple example let's just discuss one more slightly tricky example and you will understand the power of this let's just say that I have another calculation called max day sales which I'm gonna drag it and this number shows me that what was the sales of the best selling day of the month now this number right here shows me $192 was the sales of the best selling day of the month of January how do I know this number is right let's just debug the calculation let's just make sure that this calculation is right again in the three-step back calculation process the filters for 192 are the month of Jan and the year of 2011 let's just take these filters and apply it on the data. To be able to help you visualize the calculation, I have made a simple pivot table right here, which is where I have the year, the month, and the date is obviously right here. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the first step and apply the filters. So I have already applied the filter for 2011. I'm gonna apply a filter for the month of Jan, and that is also what the DAX engine is going to do. Once you've applied the filters, what the calculation is going to do is it's just going to take a look at what is the max value of the day. So here are all my days and what's the max value? The max value happens to be 192 and that is going to be calculated. And as a third part, that is going to be returned to the visual. If you know the three-step DAX calculation process, it becomes very, very easy to trace down the calculations and even debug them. And this is exactly what I teach in my DAX and data modeling course. We talk about the three-step DAX calculation process in a greater detail. We discuss very, very nuanced examples, take a look at relationships, take a look at filters, why some things are working, some things are not working, and people just love the course. In the last month alone, we've had 58 students join our courses from all around the world and they have left some raving feedback about the courses. In case you're interested in leveling up your DAX and data modeling skills, the link of the course is down in the description. If your DAX calculations are not conforming to your expected answer, then you must declare a war. I'm sorry, did I just say a war? No, no, no. I meant a var, not a war. Don't declare a war, just declare a var. Vars are like variables in DAX. They, they help you kind of uh, stage the calculations and make it more cleaner, crisper, and easier to debug. Take a look at what do I mean by that. So here, I have obviously the total sales against the month and the year, and I wanna find out what is my year-on-year -year growth. And to do that, I've written a very simple calculation right here, which is nothing but year-on-year -year growth, take the total sales, which is the very number of the sales, and divide it by the year last year sales. So that is my last year number, and minus one happens to give me the answer. Now, I do get the right answer. This number seems to be right. You can see that. In the month of Jan, we have approximately $3,500 of sales. And in the last Jan, we had about $1,200 of sales. 1,200 to 3,500 is nearly a 3X, which is a 200% growth. And that's what we see 188% as an answer. But I do not get to know what is this damn infinity. And I do not get to know what is this 100%. Now, in order to make a more cleaner and crisper calculation, I'm gonna to start to declare variables in a measure something like this. This is another measure 
which is very, very same, which is year on year with variables. And you can see that I have declared a variable current year, and that's my current year number. I've declared a variable last year, and that is my last year number. And after the return statement, I can just then choose to have any one or multiple inputs outputs presented. So let's just say that I'm trying to show current year number. So I can say CY that I'd like to return the CY calculation, press enter and drag this visual off to my uh, pivot table right here. And I only get to see that what is my current year number. Now, obviously, to be able to find the growth, you need both the current year number and the last year number. And both of these numbers should be there. So I can just maybe go ahead and modify the calculation. Let's just see if both the numbers are appearing or not. So I'll say and and I'll just maybe uh, use the pipe symbol and concatenate the two values. Let's just see if I do get the values for current year and last year or not. And you can see that at a few places, which is especially where you have the infinity, you do not, you have the current year number, which is this year number, but you do not have the denominator, which is the last year number. Obviously, if you're dividing something off with a blank or a zero, you are going to get an error and that is nothing but the infinity. So words actually help you write better calculations. They help you stage the calculations and obviously debug them. To be able to solve this, I can declare another war, not war, but var. I can declare another var and I can say, hey, this is going to be my check and the check is going to check that, hey, are the two numbers present or not? The current year number and the last year number, which I've already used that. So CY should not be equal to blank and LY also should not be equal to a blank. If both these conditions are true, then I will do my growth calculation. Otherwise, I will not. So my growth calculation is going to be CY divided by LY minus one. And that happens to be my growth calculation. And after the return statement, I can just write a very simple check. If the check happens to be true, then you can just do your growth calculation. Otherwise, this is not growth, uh, my growth calculation. Otherwise, just leave it out as blank. And now if you take a look at the growth calculation, it just shows you the very number 1.88. Obviously, we can convert that to a percentage and that gives you the beautiful answer. And now I have staged the calculation under different variables. I can call the variables depending upon what I'm trying to debug. And the calculation becomes way easier to debug if you are declaring wars, bars. Next up is the count rows trick, super helpful in trying to at least understand what's going on behind the calculation. A lot of times vars are not going to be enough and you need slightly something more sophisticated because what you're trying to do is you're trying to work with a custom or a virtual table that you have created. So let's just take a look at this particular uh, variables that we have created like a y o y variable calculation that we just created which is where I am trying to do my total sales calculation and I am doing that for the same period last year. Now same period last year happens to be a table that is going to reverse the filters to the last year filter context. Now let's just say that you're trying to debug this part of the calculation and you think that something is fishy with same period last year. What you can do is you can also take this same period last year and just try to check the number of rows for that. So let's just say that I create another calculation, which is nothing but y o y check. And I take that very calculation and I just take the same period last year, which returns me a table. And the table can then be fed in the count rows because count rows only asks you for a table. And if you don't have a table here, the count rows function doesn't work. And I just want to count the number of rows in the in here just to be sure that the number of rows are at least consistent because maybe I can just debug that. So I can just take this calculation off to the visual and this is where it shows me. Now, in the month of Jan, there were 31 rows. Obviously, Jan has 31 rows no matter whichever year you're speaking about. So Jan of this year will have 31 rows and the Jan of last year will have 31 rows. There is nothing very sophisticated about this calculation. What we're trying to do here is we're not trying to find out that how many number of rows are there in the month of Jan. We're trying to find out that in the month of Jan, how many rows were there in the sales table where the sales happened, not the entire calendar table. So I can just go ahead and revise my particular calculation. So I can just say y o y check and I can say something like, hey, this particular uh, filter, which is calendar date filter, is going to be considered only in the context of the sales table. And that is what I will do. So I've re revised my calculate table here. And I'm going to say that I do want to find the same period last year, but in the context of total sales. And once you have this table created, then you count the number of rows in that. So the count rows trick can be used in multiple ways to take a look at at least the rows which are considered off in the table that you're using, are they even the right count of the rows as well, which is going to nudge you towards the right answer. Now, if I just go ahead and commit to this thing, you're going to see that in the month of Jan in 2011, because this is 2012, there were 30 rows of data in the sales table. 
Now, if you take a look at the results that we have, we get the number 30 right here, but I'm not sure if 30 happens to be the right answer or not. So let's just go ahead that in the month of Jan 2011, were there actually 30 rows of data in the sales table or not? I'm back here in my Excel. I'm just going to go ahead and go ahead in the date and apply a filter to the month of 2011 and the month of January right here. Click on OK. And I do not have 30 rows of data. I actually have 29 rows of data right here. So what's going on? In order to understand what's going on, what you would need is a step above just counting the rows in the table. And that is what my next trick is going to be about. If you're liking the video thus far, I have prepared a beautiful PDF outlining all the tricks and the strategies that I have discussed in the video, alongside some additional resources for you to take a look at. Do not forget to download the PDF and the link of the PDF is going to be down in the description of the video. Let's continue. Now, we had this number, which is 30, and I would like to understand that why the hell on earth am I getting 30? What do I do about it? Now, here is where I will use a mix of two strategies, the DAX evaluation process, which is where we learned the three stages of DAX, as well as the query creation that we are going to take a look at. So now let's just take a look at our query at the moment. This is our YOY check. And the YOY check says that please make a table same period last year in the context of the sales. And that's the calculate table function. And this then just count the number of rows of that table. Now, in order for me to understand that what is happening in the table, I need to physically create the table so that I can take a look at every single row of the table and then also mix the DAX evaluation process. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and copy this only the table part of it. So control C on that. And I'm going to go to the table view and start to make a new table. So I'll just go ahead and make a new table, table tools, make a new table, and I will physically create a table to take a look at how the table shapes up. So I'm just going to call this table as my table check. And I'm going to maybe paste the tags right here. So calculate table, pr press enter, uh, same period last year, sales is all good. Now, at the moment, this table does not contain any filters. When you were creating a table right here in the visual, the table, this table, which is 30, the count of the number of rows of the table, did have the two filters, which is the Jan filter and the year filter, which is missing when you create a physical query as a table in your model. So how do I take these two filters? I can write these two filters in my calculate table function. So I can just go in here. That means that, hey, I'll say, hey, we have a sales filter, obviously, but we have two additional filters in which I would like to evaluate the answer. And filter number one is going to be the month, which is calendar month is equals to the month of Jan. And the calendar year is going to be the year of 2012. And that's going to be a number, so 2012. And press enter, and we now get a table. And you can see that we do get not uh, 29 rows of data, as we saw it in Excel, but we get 30 rows of data right here. Now, what's going on? Now, in order to understand this, what we need is the three-step evaluation process. Like I said, in the first step, the filters are taken off from the visual and applied to the data. So if you take a look at the two filters, we have 2012 and the month of Jan filters. These two filters are going to be picked up from my calendar table and applied to the sales table. Let's just apply these two filters and let's, let's just maybe run the three-step evaluation process. So I'm in Excel. In Excel, I'm just going to go ahead and start to apply the filters, which is nothing but 2012 and the month of January, click on OK. And now if I just happen to count the number of rows here, which is nothing but unique calendar dates, it is actually going to be 30 rows. So if I just happen to sort the data, so right click here and I sort in the oldest and newest dates, you can see that we have 1st of Jan, 2nd of Jan, which is right here, 3rd of Jan, but we have the 4th day missing, which is 4th of Jan is missing. And therefore, this table does have a 30 unique days and you have the rest of the days present all the way up until the 31st of January. And now if these uh, 30 days, which is one through 30th of Jan is now taken to the last year, it gives you the 30 days of the last year. And that is this particular second part, which is the same period last year. Remember the second step in the DAX evaluation process is going to be the calculation is going to be carried out on the filtered data. So my calculation is nothing but the same period last year. The same period last year is only going to be carried out once these two filters are applied. And then you just take a look at the last year dates of 2011. And that is the return of the answer. Sometimes you'd like to go beyond just creating physical queries or physical tables and take a look at how the table is being constructed and how the calculation is running in every single row of that table. Let's just explore the same same period last year table. So 
I am in this new view, the DAX query view right here, and that's what I'm exploring, which is where I have the by default evaluate statement. And after that, I can declare whatever DAX function and the DAX function must return a table. So the calculate table was returning a table and that's what we have. Click on run. This is not going to make a physical table. This is going to give you like a small table right here that you can actually play around with and do your DAX calculations within it. And if you want to make a change, you can also make a change, which I will talk about it right now. So. I have this calculate table, which is giving me the sale table, same table as we had created a physical table. But now against every single date of 2011 right here, I want to do the sales calculation. That means I want to see that what was the sales of 11 sales of uh, the 2nd January, 3rd January, 4th January, so on and so forth. I want to take a look at that. So what I can do is I can go ahead and start to write an add columns function. So I can just perhaps write an add columns right here. That means this particular table, the same period last year, I want to add one more column to this table and the column names is let's say sales value. So SV for that. And I, I'm just going to say that I want to calculate my total sales. And that's pretty much about it. So this is my new table right here. Let me just format this. So I'll just format the query. So this is my uh, new table right here with two columns, the calendar date, which is right here and the new column that I'm adding, which is sales value, which is is going to be right here and on this two column table I want to apply the filter of sales I want to apply the filter of Jan and 2010 to take a look at the results now once you've done the evaluate and all of the DAX that gives you a table you can click on run and that actually gives you the answer right here now let's just say that something is fishy about this particular calculation it should not give you 45 as an answer it should give you something else as an answer and you want to change the total sales DAX so here is a measure that we have used and we would like to make changes in this particular measure. What you can do is you can define the measure locally and make changes with it until you're satisfied and then you can make changes finally. So let me show you how. So once you are actually right here, wherever you have a measure referenced in your calculation, this is going to give you a small bulb sign. And if you just happen to click on the bulb sign, you can actually define the measure locally. Let me just click on define and let me show you how that works. So if I click on define, you can see that the total sales measure, which is our DAX has been defined locally up on the top. So that is my measure, define a measure. And that is nothing but my total sales measure, which is nothing but the sum X of the price into units. And that happens to be my measure. Now, let's say for some reason, I want to modify the calculation. I don't really want to multiply it with the price, the product price, but I want to multiply it with the flat price of 10. So I will change this measure right here. So I'll say, hey, do not multiply this with the product price, the VLOOKUP of that, but instead multiply that with the price of 10. So every single unit multiplied by 10. And that is my revised measure. Now, this locally defined measure is going up right here and that is not going to change your actual DAX. So if I just happen to run this query, this query is going to run locally right here and display intermediate results of the new measure that you have written. Once you're satisfied making X number of changes in your measures and you know this is the right measure that is giving you the right answer in this particular context, I can then go ahead and override the measure. So if I happen to click on override the measure, update the model, and if you now go ahead and take a look at your DAX, so I just go ahead and take a look at my total sales DAX, it is actually showing me the revised calculation. And if you've done everything right, your total sales is also going to be showing you the right number wherever you want to take a look at. This strategy is super helpful while debugging the totals which are often wrong while creating a table or a matrix visual and that is the video that you should watch next.